The simple reality is that we're missing an entire trilogy of events. And so, we then cut to Rey having been captured and placed in Kylo's interrogation chamber. Finn was right, she's been taken to the Starkiller base, for whatever reason. Had she not, many events would change. You might even call it convenient. Come to think of it, Star Wars The Force Awakens has been stuffed full of convenience and inconvenience, hasn't it? In fact, it seemed the most commonly cited issue in the screen upon initial criticism pouring in, that of rampant contrivances. The idea being that events are slotted alongside each other arbitrarily. One might refer to this process as and then storytelling, as opposed to because of. What should happen between every beat that you've written down is either the word therefore or but. This happens, right? And then this happens. No, 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 it should be this happens and therefore this happens. But this happens, therefore this happens. Now, you see movies that you're just watching, it's like, this happened, and then this happens, and then this happens. That's when you're in a movie just going, what the f am I watching this movie yeah. for? And just <laughs> yeah. like, this happened, and then this happened, and this happened. That's not a movie, you know, that's not a story. Like Trey said, it's those, those two, but, because, therefore, that gives you the causation between each beat, and that makes that, that's a story. Good luck for some, bad luck for others, convenience, inconvenience, coincidence, all leading to the payoffs. There is a distinct lack of cause and effect. There are very few times where the audience can piece events together with information they have at hand. Ah, the rebel base was found because the Empire launched thousands of probe droids throughout the galaxy. Or, because of everything Luke went through, it only makes sense that he has this newfound concentration and attitude. Or, oh, of course he stayed on the Death Star, because he never thought of the Rebellion as a significant threat. Evacuate? In our moment of triumph? I think you overestimate their chances. These events don't happen arbitrarily when slotted into their fantasy world. Tarkin chose to stay at his station despite evidence of its weakness being found because he was filled with a sense of pride and accomplishment. You yeah, remember that? He was one of the highest ranking members of the galactic government. The pathetic rebels would never have the capacity to destroy the Empire's superweapon. Cause and effect. Even the prequels understood this to a far greater degree than the sequels. With Order 66 in play, Kiadi Mundi was betrayed by his entire squad of clones in a hostile land during battle. He wasn't going to survive, even if he's a Jedi. It's cause and effect. And perhaps more tragically, he never knew the result of the droid attack on the Wookiees. Hashtag mourn the Mundi. These moments aren't based on good or bad luck. They are locked in place by what has been established previously, excluding minor variations. Nothing else could happen because of what the story has told us about these people and the world around them. Contrivance, or luck, is used as one of, if not the most common writing cop-out across storytelling. They are comparable to giving your story a little push in the direction you want it to take. Many don't even spot them in stories because they can be inconsequential, which tends to work just fine. In fact, most of the time they are inoffensive, only affecting something small once. This is very much like real life. Everyone has those things happen at certain points. Sometimes you have to stop and ask just what the odds of that happening were. The thing is, every effect does happen in life as a result of a cause. It's simply not easy for us as individuals to know. Similarly, the characters in the story don't need access to all of the information, but with us as viewers of this world, we are given great access to information specifically for us to understand the cause and effect. Things don't simply happen at random. In the case of storytelling, the writer not only constructed the world and thus has the answer, they can choose whether to give it to the audience. You are in charge of how often these things happen and to what degree they impact coming events. Unfortunately, it's quite the drug. You will race toward that particular payoff you've been thinking about for weeks and this writing tool can get you there, practically free of charge. And once you pop, you can't stop. The payoff will be made as dramatic as possible to distract the audience from how many corners were cut to reach it. Writers may begin to stretch it so far that their very foundations begin to crumble away and the payoff you were so desperate to create is significantly damaged. Instead of building the events one by one to depict the character-driven story that is true to the characters themselves to earn that payoff.
other, often more memorable content will put the work in over time with strong, consistent development and make that payoff absolutely and utterly emotionally crippling. What I would call incredible writing has at least something to do with creativity tempered by consistency. You get a little crazy, you let your brain pictures spill right out onto the page, and then you render some incredible ideas from the bog of thoughts only to temper them into novels, scripts, and screenplays redrafted into structured works of storytelling. Writers are often plagued with problems if they are building a script from scratch while having a shackle of plot points in future to account for as opposed to a more natural set of events to work toward. For example, The Force Awakens writers were shackled to this. Finn has to escape being a stormtrooper while saving Poe. Rey has to meet Finn and they have to get to the Falcon and they have to meet Han. Leia has to be leading a resistance force that are crippled compared to the current enemy faction born of the Empire. Han has to be killed in front of Rey by his son. Rey must beat Kylo in a fight. And Rey has to meet Luke at the end. The challenge was to complete all of these goals while crafting a story that could cause it naturally based on the character's decisions. So, you can work on a script and generate a huge profile while establishing everything important about a person and their world that would facilitate this journey. Or you can give up and choose the route of coincidence, which means the world will simply bend and break to allow your characters and events every change you wish to see by pure luck. Somehow Palpatine returned. From the dead. And with a focus on that, writers might just forget to pour human traits into characters, since at that point you don't require a production of personal drives that progress a story. The coincidence takes care of everything. Established rules and even your own set of rules can get in the way of what you're writing toward, which can automatically encourage you to reach into the infinite pocket of luck and pull out a miracle. But to work with those rules, to get the story you wanted while sticking to what you and many others have written before you? That's the sign of a hard-working writer. We've covered a lot of conveniences already, so you know which ones I'm talking about, and I will try and summarize it at the end, but for now, let's get clear on the subject. In a universe of possibilities, can the Falcon end up in Palpatine's granddaughter's workplace by chance? Yes, it can. And what are the odds of that? Extremely unlikely. Is it possible for Finn to crash land just outside of Rey's village to then bump right into her, being she is the one who is currently taking care of BB-8, the very droid that Finn has been tasked with finding for the Resistance? Yes, it's possible, but not even remotely likely. Is it possible for Finn to want to kidnap Captain Phasma to lower the shields and they happen to bump into her immediately and she does it for them without hesitation? Oh, we haven't even done that yet. Yes, it's possible, but my goodness, that sounds almost impossible. So when we have about 100 of these being peppered throughout every moment of the film's connective tissue, it can absolutely obliterate your suspension of disbelief. There will be an abundance of people in the audience saying, oh, come on, really? When events take place because luck would have it that way and every significant entity is thrown together as though they're in a tiny sandbox, you can feel as though you are simply watching someone tell you about what they would like to see in a Star Wars story, rather than believing a story is unfolding. This is often what people refer to when insulting work by labeling it fan fiction. It's not about the process of being a fan and writing fiction, nor is it strictly intended to insult the process of writing fan fiction in general. Great work can come from that. It's more about the idea that a fan will be motivated strictly by a love of the universe, rather than a love tempered by a history of writing in the field. A person with talent, experience, and accomplishment being paid hundreds of millions to professionally craft a meaningful story while respecting the universe as much as a fan would. Unfortunately, such a notion has been completely squashed in modern times, and I would happily take the work of any fan's fiction over the pre-packaged and approved nightmare slurry pumping onto the screen from people who barely remember character names or motivations. These days, we watch, as the writer says, they did this, and then they did this, and then this, and then they did 
did this, and it was so good, and then they did this. Comparatively, the events in the story, the driving force of the plot, can be a direct result of meaningful decisions made from the characters, accurate to their development, which typically provides a sense of catharsis in the audience. Everyone is behaving in ways you understand as a result of learning about them in prior experiences. This is akin to real life. When it comes to particular subjects, you won't even bother clarifying positions from friends because you know what they will say. This is what we do as human beings. We learn patterns. We create predictions to rely on. For example, Luke leaves Yoda because he wants to save his friends rather than complete his training. Training that would grant him more power and focus. You could have known this was his decision well before he made it as a result of seeing him interact with so many loved ones up to this point. This trait pushes him to Bespin, to Vader character-driven cause and effect. Comparatively, Rey leaves Luke because, well, she needs to have her face off with Kylo and Snoke. She doesn't even know why she's at the temple in the first place. I need someone to show me my place in all this. So they fabricate an intimate connection to Kylo, bafflingly, and that, me that means she's gotta go save him. That's a tad ridiculous because she despised him in the story moments ago for killing her <clears throat> father figure. Rey was the last person who thought Kylo could turn to the light and now she is essentially his sponsor. This suddenly pushes her to the supremacy and to Snoke to complete the plotline getting her back to the team. This is not cause and effect. Now, many people will usually say that the other films in the saga have plenty of contrivances. In fact, it's a downright staple of Star Wars. Why not have more of it? Well, because it sounds like we've built an awkward dichotomy here. The interesting option of no convenience versus as many as possible, when in reality we're dealing with a huge scale complete with the variables of frequency and impact. Not to mention that citing the presence of these issues within another property as an excuse to have more could be applied to essentially every flaw you could come up with. But I mean, let's be real for a second. What story doesn't have convenience? Why can't we excuse it? Mm-hmm, well, in the first season of Fargo, a show I do indeed recommend for the most part, we see a series of events unfold after two men happen to meet in a hospital. The story begins with one of them receiving a broken nose while the other is in a car crash. Thus, they both require medical attention. This meeting was pretty unlikely, considering they had to be injured at similar times and then land on the chairs right next to each other in the waiting room while also deciding to go to the hospital in the same exact time frame from their accidents. Now this particular meeting leads to many deceptions, betrayals, and deaths. That's a lot. We get all kinds of destruction for the people of Fargo throughout the season. The story unravels on top of that chance meeting in episode one. You have setups and payoffs everywhere. Characters in pursuit of others thanks to this original event, or rather general drama flowing from this beginning point. The interesting thing with this example is that Fargo is chock full of coincidences. Some are small, some are large, but they rarely change a character's motivations and intelligence. Much the same can be said of The Suicide Squad, a story that relies heavily on luck. Many of the key payoffs in that story would not be possible if events ran as they should. Simultaneously, it's a story about a man who can use nanotech to create all kinds of weaponry, ending up in a prison with a shark, a rat catcher, a peacemaker, and a polka dot man, to then be sent to Corta Maltese to battle a giant starfish. That sounds pretty unlikely. The point here here, if it's not become obvious, is twofold. On one hand, we have a contrivance to begin the tale, a selection of seemingly unlikely events coalescing in the same way winning the lottery will often be perceived as from the winner. Only that's why we're here. It's the event among all events that dragged attention to it for us to now watch as we don't know what happens next. The logic is simple. It would be unlikely for you to win the lottery. However, it is a certainty 
certainty that someone will win the lottery. And so, eventful stories often begin there. These people were the ones that ended up in this scenario. Anything happening to them subsequently in their favor without reason would be convenient. And vice versa, if things were to be arbitrarily difficult for them with the information we are supplied. Taking us to the other hand, where we have contrivances that litter every story element after the inciting event for each of these properties, allowing the story the writer wanted to exist to continue to exist. Inciting incidents will often be events that if dropped in the middle of other stories without support or reason would be as destructive as contrivances of similar nature, but they are specifically the beginning of the story and the why of the story being told compared to any other. Conclusion, don't use contrivances. If you must, use them for inciting incidents, and if entirely desperate, reduce their frequency and impact to the best of your ability. Now, coincidences happen all the time in life. Just the other day, I heard of a girl named Laura Buxton. She released a balloon with her name on it, and it traveled for 140 miles only to drop down and be collected by another girl of the same age called, wait for it, Laura Buxton. Stories that have no convenience or inconvenience for characters would actually be a tad unrealistic, but that's more than a simple appeal to reality. Things get worse and things get better, sometimes by complete luck, but only from their point of view. An event can come across as lucky to the character while the audience was given the mechanics ahead of time to see why these events occur, why it's not luck that caused it at all. The writer is in complete control of just how much information the audience has access to, as well as how much information the characters have access to. I'm sure Vader thought Luke was given an incredible convenience in having Han save his life, but we as the audience know why and how that happened. Now, I wouldn't pretend to know how all things come together in the grand scheme of this world, but it seems pretty unreal that deciding to record a rant about a movie on a whim while attaching that audio to a watermelon led to a career and an opportunity to meet so many incredible people. Of course, it all seems incredibly lucky when viewed from a particular lens, but when a writer abuses random chance over and over, creating an entire story out of it, nothing can have weight. No decision can be meaningful. Every character is a simple puppet, lacking agency in a caring, rigid world that will only follow the writer's desires. Of course, you might be saying, all characters are someone's puppets, but that's the entire point of strong, consistent writing. It will convince us, even for a second, that these people are real. This world is real, and when it hits the credits, we're taken back out, ready to share what we loved. This is why a certain death at the end of season one of Game of Thrones is so impactful yet seamless. It had to happen. When you know the characters involved and what was said, nothing else could happen. Cause and effect in action once again, no matter how disagreeable or painful. But I suppose you could have added a convenience of any kind, like a ship appearing out of nowhere or a sudden immunity to weaponry. or sudden, dramatic insanity. She used their innocence as a weapon against me. When you wish to keep characters or lose them for reasons that do not relate to the story being told, rather they relate to generating interest and money or fulfilling a particular worldview, or you couldn't care less about their involvement to begin with and failed to drive them, you inevitably build your house on sand. But you know what? Who is to complain if it was possible? You can say it was just lucky, and we all get lucky here and there, so it's fine. These conveniences all have room to follow cause and Effect. If you read some novels or accept some fan theories, everything slots into place. People cite the Force as if it explains everything that ever seems shaky in this universe. Something that has begun to infect the MCU as a whole as Kang is now the reason anything happened the way it did. The Force makes all of these things happen and therefore it is cause and effect. The problem is that the particularly unlikely things that did happen were some of the best events these characters could possibly 
possibly have desired. Telling me that an unseen powerful magic is just making it all come together is not only extremely lazy writing, it sets to make us ask where the Force was during many other events. Besides, the typical audience member will not find it anywhere near as personally satisfying to see difficult storytelling situations solved by an absurd level of luck. You do typically find that setups and payoffs are a tried and true method of delivering heart-wrenching drama, especially when they slot right in with the foundations of the story. The Force Awakens has several foundational writing issues, and the over-reliance on convenience is one of the biggest. At best, you simply believe that luck will always rescue your favorite characters, and if not, a sense of betrayal may seep in. At worst, you won't believe even for a second that this world has any consequence, and the entire aspect of escapism will fall apart. Yes, I know it's difficult. It takes more time to remain consistent. It costs you many resources to create a story that is pushed by characters and their actions. But great writing exists as compared to forms that are indeed cheaper, quicker, and easier. The highest of any discipline requires humans to expand their limits, and striving toward that is an admirable goal whether successful or not. When someone tells you there are no mistakes in writing, that there's no way to improve because no piece of art succeeds at anything more so than any other, and thus everything is a masterpiece in and of itself, focus on the argument rather than the conclusion. The conclusion is a wonderful thought, one designed to make you feel fantastic about your work, to push you further along as everything you are making has an incredible impact as a piece of work, not to mention an immutable personal meaning. Alternatively, you maintain that immutable personal meaning, but you come to terms with something lacking in your work. And which of these perspectives sounds easier to adopt? Well, in place of the former and latter perspective, I offer the idea that you don't take solace in always having a great work despite its potential failure. Rather, imagine what it means to hold what could be the biggest stepping stone to your magnum opus, that you break it down, find what was lacking, and learn from it, building yourself above the understood structural failings to then make something incredible. Keep at it. Redraft. Fall in love with the worlds you create, and as long as you take care of the fiction, it will in turn take care of the fantasy the audience so desperately clamors for. Things that are possible remain possible, and things that are impossible remain so. <sighs> Rant over.